Okay, Hare Krishna everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Sorry for the delay. We're doing a practical exercise today and so it took a little while to set everything up. So today we're going to talk about Manas again. Manas part three. And for anybody who's live in person, you might have a guess as to what we're talking about. <laughs> right? We've already talked about the sense of sight and the sense of hearing, and today we're talking about the sense of smell. So first I'll review some of the main points from last week. Then we're going to do a meditate on Manas exercise, which is different than the exercise that we did before, which is flash feelings. This is going to be a little bit slower. And then I'm going to tell you a story about one of my old clients. Um, his name in this one is called Jesse the Jerk. Not because I thought he was a jerk, but other people did. And then we might have time for a group discussion. We might not. There's a lot of material to cover, but we, you can also just think about it and talk about it with other people as well, what comes up for you in this class. Okay? So let's review some of the main points of Manas, the emotional mind. So one is that Manas receives inputs externally, right, from the five senses. You've already experienced it yourself personally with what you saw and what you heard in the last two classes, right? But it also receives inputs internally from our citta, our samskaras. I haven't gotten that much into that, but I showed you a map, and I talked about how Babaji talks about how these samskaras bubble up from your citta, you know, into your, into your manas, and then you experience all those intense feelings if it's an intense samskara. Manas also acts on a binary system of like and dislike. Okay? Another one of the points was that Manas is emotionally immature. Remember, we talked about like acting like a baby or a monkey? And the average age, according to me, this is not like proved by science or anything, but according to me, of the, of the years I've worked with clients, the average age, emotional age of an adult is around age seven, seven years old. Manas is also reactive and volatile. Remember the story last week of Vince? Vince the Valentine? Very volatile, very reactive, right? Manas also acts spontaneously. Get, last week, you know, I told you the story that Vince had a gun to his head. Very, very spontaneous and does not deliberate upon the consequences of his actions, of our actions, you know, that's Manas. One other point that is the parrot. Remember the crazy parrot? <laughs> manas unhinged, right? Which is out of control Manas. So when Manas is out of control, unhinged, there, we experience a lot of anger. You know, maybe if it's uncontrolled, you'll just start yelling or cursing, or maybe you'll just punch somebody and start fighting. You'll slap somebody, you'll push somebody, right? Um, or m when it's unhinged, you could feel very fearful. You could feel very scared. You could run away from something. And later when you cool down, you're like, oh, why did I run away? Now I'm in a different country. Why did I do that? <laughs> you know? um, or you could reject something very quickly, right? Manas is like, dislike, reject, you know? No, without thinking like maybe what the benefit might be of that for you. Um, or you would just avoid things you know, because you don't like it. So this activity I want to do is this meditate on manas exercise. So what it's called, there's actually a term in psychology called mindful smelling. And that, as you could tell, there's some strong smells in this basement tonight, right? <laughs> so we're going to do a focused awareness. Mindful smelling means a focused awareness of your reactions to the sense of smell. Okay? So I just want to be very clear. We're not tasting anything today. We're not touching, and we're not, like, you know, not even eating. Some people might be like, oh, this is nice. But, so nothing in the mouth, nothing even with your fingers. You're literally going to be given something in a bowl to touch the bowl and just smell it and then put it down. That's it, OK? It's just focused on the sense of smell and how your manas reacts. So if you're in the classroom, you're going to have seven things to smell right away, right off the bat. I'm going to go through the list with you. You all have something here called Meditate on Manas. Does everybody have this? OK, if you don't have it, if you're watching, just get out a piece of paper and you can write it down. OK, it's the same thing. Um, so now, Panditi, could you please help in Narottam? Could you help? So I'm going to, you're going to all receive these items now. OK, so you should have in front of you an essential oil, one essential oil, and you're going to receive uh, six other items, okay? And if you're remote and you're watching live, just go to your kitchen or go anywhere you can where you can find things that smell. It doesn't really matter what. We just want to see your reaction, your manas reaction, okay? So some ideas of things you might try would be a cucumber, watermelon. For this group, they're going to be smelling garlic and onion. Um, also cucumber and watermelon. 
something canned, if you have like canned beans or canned corn, something canned would be something different to try. Um, this group is also going to be smelling some essential oils, so if you have any essential oils on hand, you can bring those. You can smell f any fruits or any vegetables. Mm -hmm. You can smell something fresh, and you can also smell something old. Get something out of your fridge that's two days old, maybe, you know? Um, you, and also, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a craze, at least in the, in the U.S., of drinking apple cider vinegar. A lot of people do it. They call it ACV, apple cider vinegar. So we're also going to smell that. If you don't have that, you might want to smell vinegar, just vinegar itself. If you have that in your kitchen, you could also smell chili, like a chili powder, cumin, something really spicy, something sweet. So just grab what you can if you're listening remotely and you want to kind of play along with us. And for you guys, you should all have, I'm going to read the items, but if you look at your Meditate on Manas, you'll see the items you have, okay? So you should have in front of you cucumbers and garlic, canned corn, watermelon, onion. So you should have those five plus one essential oil. So if you already have those or if you're waiting to receive them, open up your box with the essential oil in it and get it out and get it ready. Don't smell it yet. Just open it. It slides open. It slides open. Pull the tab and slide it open. Take out, take out the essential oil and set it down. Don't smell it yet, okay? Just set it down in front of you and get it ready. So what I want to say about the essential oils, you guys, is that you're all going to smell four today. That's why I have you sitting close to each other. So when we do this exercise, after you smell the first one, pass it down the line and get one from somebody else. Only, only this vinegar. You're going to smell four essential oils, which is not oh, vinegar. Okay. okay, four. But you see how you only have, no, that's why you're sitting like this. Okay, so you have, you have one, you need to find three others to smell which are not the ones that you have, okay? And write down the name so you don't get confused. Write down now, look on your sheet, write down on number seven, the essential oil name. You see it? It says number seven, essential oil number one. Write down the name of the essential oil you have, it says it on the box, okay? The small glass jars that you have in front of you are, is apple cider vinegar. Don't open that until I tell you to open it, okay? And not ev there's not enough for everybody, so you have to also pass that down, okay? So everybody got it? And everybody uh, watching also have tin things to smell, essential oils mixed with some sort of food items. Does everybody have a pen to write with? Yes. And, okay, and you guys all have the items in front of you, right? Yes. Please share the, all, the, all the vinegars. Yeah, but everybody needs to smell it, so just give it to anyone. Okay, everybody's got your oil out of the box in front of you? And, okay, and so you'll have to share the essential oils with each other and switch yeah. off when we get to that, and also the apple cider vinegar. There's not enough for everybody, so if you have it, once you've smelled it, move it down. Okay? Any questions? Okay, the other thing you have in front of you, everybody should have one of these. Does everybody have a feelings wheel in front of you? Yeah, yes. Okay, so that's what you're going to use to write down how you feel when you smell the item. Got it? Okay, does anybody need one of these that's sitting in the class? What do you need? The question is, does anybody need one of these who's sitting in the class? No. Okay. Good. One thing that could save time, um, Divya, is, uh, can you move that newspaper? Are there any other essential oils there? Give those to people who don't have one. That will help save time. Who doesn't have an essential oil to smell right now? Everybody has one? Yeah. Okay. I have a question. We are only three, one, not four, so maybe we need one essential Okay, so put it one extra one there for them. Make sure it's not the same. You can smell that, Vilas. Okay. You each should have, yeah, you should have four. You're going to smell four. Okay, here we go. Ready? Just make sure you smell four and none of the same. <laughs> There's a lot of logistics to this exercise. <laughs> okay, feelings wheel, everybody got it. Essential oils, you need four. You don't have to, ha you can ask from the person in front of you. Divya, give the extra box to Kanta. Okay. So this is the mindful smelling. Meditate on your manas. Okay? So take the item that you have the first item is going to be cucumber. Don't do it yet. I'm just giving the instructions, okay? You're, we're going to start in this class with cucumber. If you're listening remotely, you can start with whatever you want, okay? Close your eyes when you smell it and slowly inhale. So we don't want to be distracted by what we see because the sense of vision actually overrides the sense of smell. 
So if you close your eyes when you smell, and I'm not going to be playing any music or anything, so I, hopefully we can be quiet when we do it, so you're just focused on how that thing smells, okay? And then slowly inhale, and notice in your body, sometimes you have a bodily sensation of something that's very unpleasant in the body. Maybe you don't have a thought or a feeling, but you're like, you want a gag or something, you know? Or maybe something burns in you. Or maybe it makes your head spin. So notice any bodily sensation, pleasant or unpleasant, okay? And then look at your feelings wheel and write down the feeling or feelings related to that smell or that bodily sensation, okay? And we're just gonna repeat these four steps for all 10 items we're gonna smell. You guys have any questions? Yes? Because we should not touch the food, so if we have two items, we just turn around. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, here we go. So, three, two, one, smell, close your eyes. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and I'm gonna guide you through it, so smell the cucumber. Nice, deep inhale. And how do you feel when you smell that? Close your eyes, don't look at it, just, if you have maybe a pen or something, you can, Poke the cucumber and pull it up to your nose if you want to get just the cucumber smell. We, thought of, we should have thought of spoons. I'm sorry. There's lots of logistics to this. But yeah, you can poke the, poke the cucumber with a pen and pull it up to your nose if you're having trouble because it's in there with the watermelon. Nice, deep breath in. How do you feel when you smell this cucumber? What feelings come up? You can also notice what bodily sensations come up. and then write it down. We're just looking for one feeling word. Use your feelings wheel. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, right? That, don't try to reinvent the feelings wheel. It's right here. <laughs> just look there and write a feeling down. There's many to choose from. Okay, and remember, it's not a big deliberation, just the first feeling. Now we're moving on to number two, garlic. Don't touch it, don't taste it, you're just gonna smell it, just smell it. Close your eyes, you don't even have to look at it. Close your eyes, and if you don't wanna take a deep breath of it, that's okay. You don't have to take a deep breath. If, it, it may make you cough, it may make you gag. It's very strong, especially if you're not used to eating garlic. We're smelling garlic now. Close your eyes and smell the garlic. And write down how it makes you feel. Okay? Got it? Garlic. How does that garlic make you feel? <clears throat> okay. Move to the third one. If you're listening remotely, just pick your third food, whatever that may be. <clears throat> Canned corn for this group, the corn. That corn was not f cook f freshly cooked. It came out of a can. How do you feel when you smell that? Close your eyes. Take a depth, an inhalation of that canned corn and see how it makes you feel. How do you feel? Keep your eyes closed. Let your sense of smell dominate. I think something happened here. I lost my screen. It's not sharing anymore. Yeah. Share it again. Okay. So just go share screen. Share. 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 You guys can see okay? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we're on the canned corn, right? For the group here. And for everybody watching remotely, you're on your third item you're smelling. So let's move to four. Watermelon. Watermelon. Close your eyes. 
If you need to poke it with the pen and pull it up to your nose so you don't have to have it mix with the cucumber smell, you can do that. Inhale. <coughs> what comes up for you when you smell the watermelon? How do you feel when you smell the watermelon? Go ahead and pick a feeling off the feelings wheel. What comes up for you with this watermelon? Okay, I'm moving now to number five. Red onion. Red onion. <coughs> Try not to touch these because it will influence your sense of smell. Okay, so touch the bowl, but don't touch the items. It's the same thing as looking and touching. Then it just, we want to hyper focus on your sense of smell. So ideally you're not touching, you're closing your eyes and you're just putting the bowl right to your nose. Finding it a little bit fast to identify. Do you want me to just skip it? You can just write like or dislike. And then you could fill in the feeling later. Okay, red onion. The question was, it's, for some people it might be too fast to identify the actual feeling, so you can just write like or dislike. Later you can go through with your feelings well and take your time. Okay? Let's move to apple cider vinegar. Now some of you have it, it's in a glass jar. Take a quick whiff of that, close your eyes, to quick, quick whiff, and pass it to the next person. Okay? It's very strong. You don't have to screw the cap on, just pass it to the next person. Okay, this is apple cider vinegar. Give it a smell and pass it to the next person. Write down your feelings on the apple cider vinegar. There, Mary has one. Has everybody smelled it? Who has not smelled it? There's apple cider vinegar to smell. Everybody smelled apple cider vinegar. That was quick. Okay. Everybody's got a whiff of the apple cider vinegar. Okay, so now Panditji, can you um, can you guys pass all the stuff down? We're done with the smelling this, and Panditji is going to collect it and remove it from the room because I know it reeks of garlic and onion. So if you can pass all your dishes down to the end, and Panditji and Divya are going to take them away. Okay. Thank you guys very much. So that's the smelly part yeah. done. OK, so go ahead and pass all that stuff down to the end where Pandi and Divya are. You don't have to com condense them. OK. <laughs> so now get your essential oil ready. Pass all the dishes down and get the essential oil ready. So when, when you, after you smell the essential oil, you're going to pass it with the box. You don't have to put it away, but pass it with the box to the next person, okay? And just switch around and make sure that you do four different ones. So you've written the name down. Pass all the food down. Okay. Divya, you got it? Are there any more food plates around? Any more? Okay. So now we can remove all that stuff out of the basement. The glass jars you can leave here with the apple cider vinegar. There should be 10 you put there. Leave those here, Divya. OK, apple cider vinegar, any more? Those glass jars? OK, give those to, hold up your hand and give those to Pandit. OK, all the bad smells are gone. So now we're going to move to <laughs> essential oils. Maybe we'll get some good smells. So go ahead, take your essential oil. Don't put it on you, just smell it. You open it up and give it a whiff, okay? And think about how you might feel. Then feel if you see any sensation in your body, any feeling at all. With that. Okay, so after you've smelled it, don't put it on you because it's very strong and it can burn your skin. Some of these are called dermotoxic. It can burn your skin, so don't put it on your skin. Just give it a smell. And if you're not quite sure, just put like or dislike. And then sw swap with a partner or somebody next to you, OK? Now we're moving to the next one. 
Okay, so you should be on your second essential oil. <laughs> Write the name down. Write the name down on your sheet of the essential oil. And do the same thing. Smell that and see how it makes you feel. Um, it's not really you know, that much about is it the exact feeling, it, it, because if you're getting slowed down, you might be trying to fixate too much on the exact feeling. You can just write like or dislike. OK, so everybody's doing their second one now, second essential oil. If you're listening in the audience and you don't have essential oils, just move on to the, wh whatever your eighth food item is or the eighth thing that you're smelling. OK? So go ahead and move. We're moving to number nine now. Go ahead and switch with somebody with an oil that you haven't smelled yet. And write the third oil down. The third oil down. OK? Everybody get a third oil, something you haven't smelled yet. And give that one a whiff and see what you think. If you can close your eyes and take an inhale, that would be the best. Make sure to write the name of that one that you're smelling, the third one. There's quite a variation in these smells. Make sure your oil is still in the box that it came with. OK, we're moving to the final one, essential oil number four. And for the group of listeners remotely, your, your tenth item to smell, whatever that may be. Make sure you're keeping it with the box, the oil with the box. OK, so this should be your fourth oil you're smelling. Write down the name of the oil. Make sure it's something you haven't smelled before. OK. This should be a quiet exercise. This is a meditation. You're meditating on your manas. Manas likes to talk. Manas likes to talk, right? Try to control your manas and meditate on what's happening internally for you. Try to see your manas. Does it like it? Does it not like it? What any bodily sensations you might be having? Okay, so that's your fourth one, and that's the last smelling thing we're doing. So now look at your feeling words you wrote down. Maybe you wrote like or dislike. Maybe you wrote the actual feeling. And just take a tally and see, out of all these 10 things you smell, just note what did you like and what did you not like. Some people might have liked everything. Some people might have disliked everything. And some people, most people probably have a mix. There's some things you might have liked, and there's some things you might have disliked. OK? So look at your list of the 10 things you meditated on. And notice your likes and dislikes. And then out of the four oils you smelled for the group sitting here, pick which one you liked the best, if there was one that really you liked a lot, and circle that one and put a heart by that. Out of the four you smelled, circle the one you liked the best and put a heart by that. Your most like. Two. Essential oils and the fruits Out of the four essential oils that you smelled, what was your favorite? Circle that essential oil and put a heart by it. OK. So you've just experienced your manas. This time, your manas was reacting to the sense of smell. It's pretty interesting, right? The, the, the reactions you have when you were hearing things last week were very strong, right? Some people might have had really strong reactions. It can, I mean, like the ambulance last week that you heard, that could trigger a samskara, you know, of maybe something that happened to you or one of your loved ones, you know? Now the sense of smell, smell also has a lot of samskaras attached to it. So sometimes you smell, you just smell one thing and you're like, oh my God, that totally takes me back to, you know, Kripalu, where I was doing yoga or some, some real specific memory, potentially. Right? I don't know if any of you guys experienced that, but <clears throat> it certainly got a like or dislike if it had a memory with it, right? <clears throat> so I just want to say a little thing about essential oils. So I'm, not the food part, but the last four oils, you know, the four oils you smelled. A lot of you are familiar with essential oils and probably use them. 
in your lives. Um, but there's so many benefits to essential oils. It's, it, they're being used actually in hospitals, not around the US, but in some specific hospitals in the US. And they're using it, um, lavender in particular, to help with um, recovery from surgery. And people recover a lot more quickly when they just put a little lavender essential oil in a diffuser in the room. They get, they get discharged a lot more quickly. So it works for the hospital because it, they, you know, they don't have to pay as much. <laughs> you know? but, um, and it works for the patient too, because nobody wants to be recovering too long in a hospital, right? Um, but here's some general benefits of essential oils that they may be, sh they may, you know, we can't say conclusively, but that they can boost your mood. They can improve your job performance even. If you just um, have a lot of like stress or anxiety, it also helps to inc increase your focus. Um, they can improve sleep. They actually kill bacteria and fungus and virus, viruses, which is very powerful. They can help to re reduce anxiety and pain, inflammation, nausea and headaches. These are just a small number of things that I've listed, but there's many, many more. I have book, books just on the different benefits. You can look it up. I have a book that you can look up alphabetically, whatever your problem is, and it says the oil for that. So essential oils are also used to manage feelings, and today we're talking about manas. So it's important to know um, the specific oils you guys just smelled. Here's the 10 oils that I handed around, and I was just going to tell you. But before I tell you, I just want to say that es essential oils can be used like as a support. So if there's, just say you have anxiety. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna stop taking my anti-anxiety medication that my Western doctor prescribed to me and I'm just gonna smell cinnamon and I should be all good. Some people do that because a lot of people hate you know, Western or allopathic medicine. They, they never wanna touch it, but they, have a, you know, they might have anxiety or depression. So it's not that the essential oil replaces it, it can support. If, you work, if you're working with a psychiatrist and you have a diagnosis, that's what I'm saying. But if you have like mild anxiety or stress, the essential oil can be very powerful. So bergamot, for those of you who smelled that one, bergamot lifts the mood. I don't know if you noticed that when you were smelling it. It lifts the mood. It reduces feelings of anxiety and depression. Cinnamon can help to reduce stress and anxiety. And some people have a big sum scar with cinnamon because they go, oh, this smell reminds me of the holidays, you know? There's lots of things made with cinnamon in the holidays, right? So even that could potentially reduce your stress and anxiety if you had a high functioning family, you know, in your childhood. But okay, citronella boosts energy. Now a lot of these work at the physical level too. For example, citronella, we, a lot of us know it, it, it um, repels mosquitoes. <coughs> but I'm just talking at the mental level what it's used for. Citronella uh, can boost the I should go back. Okay. Um, so lemon. Lemon. I, I got a, a particular certification and training for how to use essential oils in my <coughs> mental health counseling practice. And I remember they, the lady who was teaching it said, lemon is sunshine in a bottle. Sunshine, sunshine in a bottle. She said it's very, very, very good for depress depressive symptoms. It also increases your energy. Lemongrass is known to help reduce stress. Patchouli, for those of you who smelled that one, it has so many benefits. It can help reduce depress depressive symptoms, stress, anxiety, and also symptoms related to autism and ADHD. Tea tree oil helps to reduce fatigue. It's very like, whew, it's strong, right? When you smell that, it's like wake up. <laughs> um, reduces fatigue or fear, stress and anxiety, um, related to phobias, which is also interesting. Tea tree specific for phobia. So anybody who has a phobia, like for me, the next time I go to the dentist, I'm going to smell that <laughs> before she puts the needle this big in my mouth. Um, and then white cedar. For those of you who smelled white cedar, that increases feelings of calm, peace, and focus. So I know I went through this very fast, but you can take this slide. I'll, I'll email it to all of you after. And you can check and see like what you wrote down, if you like it or dislike it, and what feeling you had, if it matches with some of the benefits that people have found for the general you know, for, for most people that they would feel this, but not everybody. So if you have a different feeling, remember your feeling can't be wrong. So if you're like, that, ew, I hated that one, go with that. 
you know, it's not like, oh, I hate it, but I'm going to make myself smell it because it's supposed to reduce my stress. <laughs> you know, if you don't like it, there's many things that can reduce your stress. So don't pick the one that you had a dislike for. Don't force it on yourself. Okay. So here's some interesting things about the sense of smell. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but the, but when you smell something, it acts differently. The sense of smell acts differently than the other four senses. It bypasses a part of your brain, which is like the conscious part or the thinking part of your brain. And it goes right into the emotional part. That's very powerful, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because the sense of smell can quickly, very quickly, arose, arouse very strong emotions in you without even realizing it, because there's no thinking, there's no digesting, there's no processing. You just smell something and you act. Same thing with the memories. If you smell something, you know, right away it can trigger a very painful samskara and you don't even realize it. You might not even realize it's a samskara. You just feel very angry, or you feel very scared, or you feel very sad. So we can be influenced positively and negatively by our sense of smell, and that's important. So when you all came down to the basement, I think you smelled a reeking, disgusting, <laughs> probably smell of garlic and onions. You're like, wow, you know? So that can affect you negatively, right? Because garlic and onions are rajasic and tamasic. They can make you feel angry and agitated, and we purposely don't eat them as devotees, you know? And then you have a basement reeking of that. But it was to give you the experience of how much it can affect your mind and why we don't eat it, you know? But the sense of smell can also be used positively in a very positive way, to our advantage, to rapidly subdue a feeling you're having that's one you don't want to be having. If you're feeling very angry or very scared or very sad, very quickly you can smell something. And because it ha doesn't have to go through the thinking mind where you have to digest and process and de de deliberate, it can change it very quickly. And that's an interesting way to use the sense of smell in a positive way. So the nose knows. So our sense of smelling is very powerful. And sniffing, you know what sniffing is? Like, you know how dogs do that? <laughs> sniffing, right? This is so interesting. You can actually, they've done a lot of studies on this. And you can pick up on other people's emotional state by the smelling them. You can tell if somebody smells. You may not be aware of it, but you might be like, I don't want to hang around that person. I get, I'm just getting bad vibes. Because like I said, the sense of smell is not in our awareness. The other four senses have to go through the thinking mind. But you know when you're around someone, you're just like, I'm getting bad vibes, I'm, I don't want to be around. They have a bad aura or something, but it also could be the sense of smell. You can smell if somebody's fearful, happy, sad, angry, you know? And um, you, you pick up on those subconsciously. So they did some research on this, and what they did is they studied facial movements of volunteers, okay, who had to smell other people's sweaty clothes. They probably were getting paid money to do this. <laughs> and then they're probably poor, starving college students who needed the 100 bucks, you know? So what they did is they had one group of participants, you know, they're probably all wearing like t-shirts, you know, and they had that one group of participants watch scary movies. And then the other group of participants watch very joyful, happy movies. So the scary ones, you know, they were, those people were s s having a different kind of sweat. Mm -hmm. And then the happy ones, they were having a different kind of, s something came out in the sweat, believe it or not, that the other, the other participants, when they said, here, smell this, they actually could pick up on it. I think it was like 77% of them. Mm -hmm. They could pick up that there was something, you know, unpleasant about it. And when they would smell it, they would be like that. The people who smelled the shirts of the people who watched the scary movie, they were watching their facial expressions and they'd be like, and then other people smelled the shirts of people watching like the happy movies and they were like, oh, to 77% of the people were accurate. So that shows how much the sense of smell, you know, it actually is probably affecting our decision making, our mood, you know, because we're around a lot of other people and in India it is very sweaty. <laughs> so, especially <laughs> for me, um, right? So we're picking up on that a lot. And then they did another study with parachute jumpers. Mm -hmm. People who are going to jump on a, from a parachute for the first time ever, and they're very scare, scared. Mm -hmm. Not the adrenaline junkies who loved it. These are people very first time and maybe their only time, you know? And the, and the, the sniffers, not only could they smell the fear, they, be, they felt fearful themselves. And they didn't know these guys were jumping from parachutes. They just were told, here, smell this t-shirt, what, what do you feel? And they felt fear. They felt the fear of the parachute jumper w just by smelling the shirt. So we should not underestimate the sense of smell. So smelled emotions may be contagious. So you see this one? 
these two girls, they're friends, right? And this is called like a happy smell. <laughs> Here's the story. Imagine you go out and you meet a friend, like this girl's meeting her friend. And your friend was just on her mobile phone waiting for you, watching funny video clips. Just the sweat from that actually would affect the friend to the point that she would feel happy to see you and automatically smile. But they have done the research on it and saying, actually, she's smiling. Yeah, she's happy to see you, but because you have the good smell on you because of the happy sweat, basically. <laughs> and if your friend had been watching scary movies, you would have felt apprehensive to see her. That's what the research is, is showing from the, the studies. Very powerful. So now let's practice, OK? So this is a little different. I'm going to tell you a story of one of my clients um, in the past, Jesse the Jerk was what we're calling him. Um, and just listen and take notes on anything you observe related to Manas, what I've explained before in the past two lectures about the characteristics of Manas. If you were not here, that's fine. Uh, Write down anything you notice about somehow the sense of smell and what I've said today about the sense of smell and how it, you might see something about the sense of smell in this story. And if that's too much, just listen to the story. Sometimes it's nice to just relax and listen to the story. You don't have to always f f flex your booty. You can just listen and relax if you want. Okay? So this is the story of, of Jesse the Jerk. Jesse was a 12-year-old boy. And he was diagnosed with aut autism and bipolar disorder. He was admitted to the residential psychiatric hospital where I worked, and he was assigned to my caseload. He struggled with very explosive anger and no known trigger. So we had no idea why this kid was like completely having these outbursts. And this psychiatric hospital was residential. It was so sad. So this kid was 12, you know, and I'm getting his intake paperwork, and he's probably going to be there for six months. It's not like they're going home. You know, they're like basically locked in this unit. It's, it's like a maximum security prison. You have to, you have to, you have to like um, use your little name tag thing with the beeper thing to get through every door, many sets of doors to even go get the kid. It's like very sad. So um, he was removed from his parents' home and now his grandparents' home due to his anger outbursts. He was abusive to his grandparents. He was abusive to his parents. And he was abusive to his younger siblings and to his family pets. So he was such a danger, he couldn't really be around anybody. So now he was locked in at this hospital, and he got assigned to me. So before I even got a chance to meet him, I heard my name being called over the loudspeaker. Miss Jessica, report to the Stingray unit immediately. Welcome to life at a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god. So you have to run because you don't know what's happening. And you have, usually we have about 10, 10 children each on our caseload. So if one of those t kids was trying to kill themselves or trying to hurt themselves or someone else, you were called, no matter what you were doing. You have to drop everything. So I'm like sprinting down. And you, I, I'll never forget the sound of my keys. Like, because it was so traumatic, actually, and stressful every time, you know? So my key, I remember the sound of my keys hitting and jingling as I was like running <laughs> down to the Stingray unit. The Stingray unit was the name of the unit for teenage boys. Mm -hmm. And they were, um, the unit smelled like sweat, urine, and dirty socks to me. I was particularly sensitive to it, I think, also, because I grew up in a house with girls. And we all liked like lotions and essential oils and perfumes. I have three sisters, no boys, you know, and my mom. And the house always smelled like that, you know? So it was very strong for me to be in a boys unit. I mean, I didn't have any brothers. I didn't have any male, men around like that. So I was like, whoo, whenever I'd go in there, you know? So it smelled like that. And these boys were teenage boys. So I don't know what they're normally like. I mean, because I didn't grow up with them. But they were fighting all the time and aggressive and like, you know, always doing something like pushing and fighting and yelling. And it was loud and smelly and difficult to go on that unit. And I was actually scared to go on that unit. We got training, actually, as therapists. There's about 15 of us, and they put us through a training on how to deal with like those boys or, or residents, those residents that live there when they would get aggressive, you know. And they would make fun of me because I would just like duck. <laughs> I don't want to, like, I didn't want to pin them down. So eventually, they just assigned me to all like teenage girls with depression, basically, or you know, borderline personality disorder, something where they're not going to beat me up, you know. And it's like I can just be soft with them. But some of the people were really good with fighting back, but that wasn't my thing. So I was also shocked when I saw that I got this Jesse. 
because I was like, I've never, you know, okay, a teenage boy with explosive anger. I'm like, oh my God. So I was, I was scared to go on that unit. So anyway, I was running down the hall as fast as I could to respond to this emergency call. And when I arrived on the Stingray unit, the nurses were frantic. And they brought me over to a brick wall inside the unit where Jesse was running full speed towards the wall and beating his head off of the wall. And he would smash his head and his fist on the wall. And now, don't forget, I've never seen this. I've never seen him before. This is my first, this is my introduction to Jesse. And, and then he would make this very loud grunting animal sound. He'd be like, like the Hulk, you know? It was very, like, very strong. So I'd never, I was like frozen. I'd never seen anything like that. So he would run away from it again, and then he'd go do it again. Full speed at the wall and slam his head and fists and yell and scream like a, a really angry animal. And his face was bright red, and it was just dripping with sweat. I had no clue what to do. No idea. I mean, what is a therapist going to do? I'm like, all right, I only knew one thing. One thing I know is talk therapy is not going to work in this situation. <laughs> Has anybody ever been so angry and then somebody tries to like talk about it with you? I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> like, I'm like, why are you calling me? You know, it's not going to work with this child who's experiencing this uncontrolled rage. Like, so as I turned toward the nurses, you know, to tell them, I, I, ha I was going to turn around and be like, I, I have no idea what to do. Why are you calling me? Four huge security guards came and they just tackled Jesse to the ground. They tackled and they pinned him down. And um, he was growling, you know, like, he sounded like a rabid dog. You know, he was, growl he was growling, he was drooling. I felt so bad to see this poor kid, he's only 12, you know, in that situation. And they penned him down, these big guys, you know. They call it a restraint, restraint. But it looks like very much more severe than that. And actually, if you look at the research, children are killed every year in these restraints. Sometimes they break the windpipe accidentally. It's so sad. So some, some states, at least when I used to work like 10 years ago at that hospital, or maybe 15, but when I worked there, they, would, um, they made it illegal in some states that you can't, you can't do restraints anymore to kids, you know. But at this hospital, it was legal when I worked there, so they had this Jesse pen down. And a few minutes, the doctor came and gave him an injection and just sedated him, completely knocked him out. So would you believe that the next day the same thing happened? This is the story of Jesse's <coughs> life. The same thing. And the day after that, too. And every day they would call me. And I would run down, and I'd be like, I don't know what to do. Was, I felt so helpless, you know? So, and it was at 4 p.m. 4 p.m., I would get this call over the loudspeaker. I'd run to the Stingray unit. Every time he's running and banging his head, and every time the nurses were like, we don't know what to do, you know? And then they would call the security the doctor would come, we'd all respond the same way, by our some scars. I'd be like paralyzed, you know? And the nurses would be like, I don't know, you know? And then the doc the, they would pen him down, and then they would give him that big injection. And then they would lock him in something that looked like this. It was an empty prison cell. There was no bed. There was no toilet. There was no sink. Because anything that was in there, he could take and try to kill himself with that. And he had tried already before. So you can't have anything where he, like just say there was a sink there, he would ba bash his head off of that. You know? So he would be locked in there, and you could look through the window, and they'd be like, come and look at him. And I'm like, oh, I feel so bad. You know, it was so stressful. We had rounds every day, and we would meet with the medical director and discuss it. So it's not that nothing was happening, but we all were. He was on so many medications. You know, the buck had stopped here. I mean, they tried so many things. He had so many therapists, so many different things, and we didn't know what to do. We were trying. So when he would regain consciousness, they would release him, and he'd do the same thing the next day. He wasn't even allowed off the unit for some time because he was so aggressive. They were like, what if, what if he does that to you in your room? So I'd go meet him and he'd be like, I don't know. And I'd be like, all right, I don't know. You know, it was really hard. But on the fourth day, I had planned a meeting with Jesse's grandmother who came in. We were going to discuss his case. The meeting was at 12 o'clock noon, which was the lunchtime. And they said, oh, Jesse's emotionally stable now because it always happens at 4. It's noon. He's emotionally stable. So the medical director told me in the rounds, bring, you bring Jesse to your room with the grandmother because he's stable. You can sit in there with her. And um, so we were waiting for the grandmother. She was late. So I said, Jesse, just, I went and got him at the cafeteria. I said, just bring your lunch tray. So he had his lunch tray, which looked kind of like this. He had a very plain burger. And then he had peas and carrots, but he had separated out all the peas. He was picking them out one by one. 
So I realized something very interesting about Jesse. I was surprised to see he ate all the carrots, but he had picked those peas out one by one, and each time he touched a pea, he would make this very exaggerated, like disgusted face, and he'd be like, <coughs> like really, I'm like, is he kidding? I thought he was like joking, but he wasn't. Every time he touched the pea, he would do that. And I asked him, what's wrong, Jesse? Why, why don't, what's wrong with these peas? And he said, I, I hate the smell of them. I hate the smell. And to me, I don't think peas smell that strong. I don't know. If, I mean, we all just smell garlic and onions and it's really strong vinegar, right? But peas, they seem pretty mild to me, but he hated them so much. So it turns out Jesse had a very sensitive sense of smell. And at the time I was, you know, actually doing my clinical hours there for my licensure. So it's not that I was an expert on what was going on with Jesse, even though I knew he was autistic. I didn't know that actually that's a feature of autism. It's pretty well known. In autism, you have a heightened sense of smell. So at 4 p.m. that day, when I got my usual call to run down to the Stingray unit, I had my secret weapon. I came with my Vicks Vapor Rub. You know, Tiger Balm, something like that? Very strong peppermint kind of eucalyptus smell. I said, let's try it. He has a sensitive sense of smell. We've tried everything <laughs> else, what the hell? So I brought that balm with me, that with that potent sense of smell, it made my eyes water. So I'm thinking, all right, Jesse's sensitive. Let's see what it does to his eyes, you know? <laughs> so if he's that, if I'm that sensitive, you know, let's see how he's gonna respond. So the nurses, they looked at me the same way that they did all the other days. They were helpless and they were desperate. They didn't have any answer. And I gave the nurse the Vicks Vapor Rub. That's what it's called in the US. I think here it's called Tiger Mom. I gave it and I said, here, you put that under his nose. The cool thing about working at a place like this is they're open to try anything because we're all so desperate to help these kids. You know, by the time they're here, they've been through so many different doctors and so many different tries of everything that they're quite o open. To, so I'm like, try the Vicks Vapor Rub. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay, you know, please just, you know. So Jesse smelled it and immediately calmed down. They put it under his nose and he immediately went, Shh. It was faster than the injection. He didn't need any pen down, nothing. His mood changed instantly. He innocently smiled and he said, mm, that smells good. We sat there with him and he continued to smell it. You know, his eyes were watering. And he said, this stuff is strong. It makes me cry. But you know I'm not really crying, Miss Jessica. I said, oh no, Je Jesse, I know, you're super strong, you're a tough guy, you're not crying. And he laughed and he said, yes I am. And he, like, he, he went like that. Aww. So that's the story. Aww. Sense of smell. So what did you guys notice about the sense of smell? What did you notice in this story? Anything in particular about what I was saying in the talk about the sense of smell that you noticed played out in the story? Jessica, may I talk? Yes, Badra, please. Howdy, boy. Howdy, boy. Howdy, boy. Everybody, everybody. Howdy, boy. Yeah, um, well, I noticed, first of all, that you, you associated the, 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 the stingray unit with the smell like like uh, sweat, urine, and dirty socks, and <laughs> you didn't really like it. Yes, uh, dislike, thing, dislike. You know, regarding the smell, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> and that generated you like feelings of maybe fear, disgust, disgusted, this kind of thing. Yes. Then, you know, when, when you observed that uh, Jesse had his tray of food and he was separating the peas from the carrots, and you asked why he was doing that, and he said, "I, I don't like the smell yes. of the of the bees." Yeah. Then you discover the the how Jesse has this very strong sense of smell, and mm -hmm. that's what that's where you found like a remedy for his anger outburst by uh, bringing the tiger bomb, <laughs> which uh, is like the opposite it created the opposite reaction of like calming and yeah you know changing his frame of mind I good think. very good badra you caught a lot of it thank you good job yeah. yes krishna das well i was thinking about the 
like what was the root of, of his anger against his grandparents, young siblings and family pets. And the common thing about all of them is that they don't smell good. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to say that. That's a subtle point. Yeah, yeah. of course, because <laughs> the, the old people have certain smell that comes naturally from their skin, which is different from the, from the younger people. And this can be perceived if you have like deep sense of smell. Younger than him that have 12, there are childs and this child sometimes make pee, sometimes they don't take yeah, bath and all the And <laughs> other thing is like the pets. Pet, like pet a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so of course the pets very also good. have this, this bad smell. So probably he's aggressive to them. He was just trying to remove this smell from them and uh, that's why he seems aggressive to them but probably he was just trying to remove this thing from around him because he is hypersensible <laughs> to that. Yeah. Half of it I agree with that they might, might the dog and maybe the child had a bad sense of smell. I wouldn't categorize all old people to have a bad sense of smell. <laughs> and he had some pretty serious diagnoses, bipolar disorder and autism, so it's not just that he was trying to remove the sense of smell. Mm. There's a lot more going on you know, mentally with him. Sure. It could be that that aggravated him because he didn't like the smell, though. That's a, a good point. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that, that's what I was thinking, that probably this sense of smell Aggravated, there, yeah. Ag ag aggravated, yeah. probably, yeah, Very this good. condition, yeah. Okay. Anyone else, that you, anything else you noticed in this story that related to the sense of smell? Yes, Vilas. The smell bypassed the rational mind yes. and instantly changed his mood. Yes, very good. It certainly did do that, didn't it? Yes, Kamala, you have the mic? Okay. I don't know if he's okay, but I So I, um, I associate with those smells and uh, I got the sensation in myself. So I was feeling like disgusted when the the baby was like um, being so much disgusted b because of this peas. Oh, it was a boy. when Jesse was smelled yeah. the peas, when yeah, you, yeah. you felt also disgusted by hearing yeah. how he was like gagging. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was, I don't know. So that was contagious. Connected. Contagious. Sense of smell is contagious. That was one yeah. of the points. You're right. Yeah. This. Very good. And also about when you enter and I think I have in my files also this type of smells. They are not unknown to me, so I felt the same sensation. Yeah. They triggered your samskar of smelling dirty socks yes. and sweaty thing, you know? Good. Very good. Anyone else? Okay. So I'm going to um, wrap up by just saying um, the end of this story turned out really nicely. So the, um, oops, I don't know what's happening. Sorry. Um, the, that story kind of got out because Jesse was a really difficult case. And so the, uh, the supervisor heard, my supervisor heard about what happened. And she said, whoa, we, we, we should try to try this with some of the other, you have your other nine, your, your nine patients, try it with some of them. So I tried and it started working for all different kinds of things, anxiety, depression, OCD, all different kinds of things. So we got a lot of success with different essential oils, not, no more Tiger Balm, but I purchased essential oils for the kids and we started getting breakthroughs. And then they had me present it at the hospital. And they said, well, we shouldn't be giving them glass bottles because a lot of them are suicidal, or when they get angry, they'll take it and cut themselves. So put it in a, on a little cotton ball and give them a little plastic baggie and put it in there. Let them pick the oil they want and just do it each day. Meet, they had to be meet with me every day because there were you know, extreme cases. So every day they'd meet and we'd put the oil in a cotton ball and they would use it to smell. And so then all the other kids started saying, what are you doing? And they said, oh, I'm with Miss Jessica and she gives me essential oils. So now, then my supervisor said, can you train the whole hospital? So I did a training for 15 therapists who had 10 kids each. So this hospital, when you would walk in it, it smelled like <laughs> really good, <laughs> really, really good, you know? And then I trained all the therapists as well for them personally. So now the therapists were all using it themselves. And I, I found a company that got into our story. So they sponsored us. They gave us essential oils. They gave us diffusers. They, tr you know, and I, I did all the training. And the, the best part of the story is, this was all before I met Babaji and came to Bhakti Yoga, but when I met Babaji, I, I was still kind of working with them and training them from here. And um, Babaji came, I brought him to that hospital. He came to that hospital, he, he, he met the people that I trained, the therapists, he saw the places that I worked, he saw the hallway I would run down. And um, also if any of you have read my book, I talk about these kids in one of the chapters. And so that's the place that I brought Babaji. So it comes full circle back to, he actually connected with these kids and he wrote them stories they wrote to Babaji and asked, what's love? What is love? Because most of them had, all been, had pretty much all been abused. And he wrote back and answered and taught them what is love. 
So it all started with Jesse and banging his head off the wall, and that's the full circle ending. And so the final thing I want to say is that um, for the essential oil that you circled and put a heart by, you can keep that one. That's a gift from me to you. So you can just check the one that you like and keep that one. And if you don't have it in front of you, find the person who has it. And I have a few extras here. Okay? So thank you guys very much. Haribo. <laughs> ready, ready. Thank you. Thank you guys.